Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'd really like to thank my fellow uh, panelists, very esteemed and longtime supporters and friends of Asia Society. Um, as Boon Hui mentioned, this program um, is organized as part of our 60th anniversary uh, celebrations. And uh, we really felt that it was such a wonderful moment to reflect back at the foundation and the origins of our contemporary program founded by Vishaka uh, during her tenure here. And just to examine and think about the legacy that our contemporary program has had, um, both within our institution, but also uh, in the field at large. Um, so, you know, I think I, you know, I specifically wanted to highlight two very seminal exhibitions um, that were organized very early on uh, after the founding of our um, contemporary program in 1990. Uh, that's Contemporary Art uh, tra in Asia, Traditions, Tensions, that was organized in 1996, and um, Inside Out, New Chinese Art, uh, that was held in 1998. And just as a personal aside, um, Inside Out particularly had um, a significant impact on my uh, being on the stage tonight. I uh, had come to New York just shortly before and was a young museum professional, and I came to Asia Society to see that show, and that was really one of the defining um, factors for me to want to um, pursue an, uh, you know, a profession focusing on contemporary Chinese art and, and Asia. So I really Thank you, Vishaka, for that, because otherwise, I don't know if I'd be sitting here. Um, but I think just to contextualize this moment in time, um, you know, let's think about, you know, the United States and New York in particular, and maybe the larger world in the early 90s. I mean, this was the time of identity politics. You think about the early 90s, you know, the there was a lot of discussion about race, gender, sexuality. Um, in 1993, there was like the ninth, uh, political Whitney Biennial that Thelma Golden had organized. So it was a very um, particular moment, I think, where people were considering other identities that were not part of this kind of uh, Western male, you know, Caucasian perspective. And so I'm wondering, Vishaka, if we could start off um, the conversation, uh, you know, if you could elaborate a little bit on how you came to develop um, our contemporary program. Well, first of all, good evening. And it's wonderful to be back here. I'm sorry, Josette, that I was not here when you did the former president's interview because I was in Brazil. But it's wonderful to be back. And it's kind of strange to be in this room talking about that particular conversation because it goes right back to walking from this room to go to the small room where I was invited to interview for the directorship of the museum. At that point it was called, still called the Asia Society Galleries. And I was at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and I had begun to feel as a curator of traditional art with a PhD in Asian art history, that there was something wrong with the picture, which was that why was it that in all the museums, if you were working at looking at Asian art, you didn't go beyond the early 20th century? And why was it that in the contemporary and the modern side, you didn't look at much of Asian art, a little bit of Japanese, that was about close as you came. There were artists. There was the Noguchi, there was Kusama, but you didn't really look at that region. So I remember this very well. Going into the interview, and Robert Oxlum was the president then, my husband now, uh, not then, <laughs> but um, I walked into that room and at first I had not applied for the job, I was not interested, I was very happy, but I said, you know what? You have an opportunity. You're the Asia Society. You do contemporary issues, you work on policy, you work on education, you have a responsibility to do something about this huge lacuna that exists. And they said, how would you go about doing that? And I said, well, you know, first of all, my resume looks like I would be a good museum director for what you do. But you really should think about what else needs to be done. 
And so then we started talking. Sherman Lee, the great icon of traditional Asian art, former director of the Cleveland Museum of Art and also special advisor to Mr. and Mrs. Rockefeller, was the chair of the search committee. And I, my first job was at the Cleveland So he was my mentor, right? So he was the one who had said, you know, Vishaka, you should really come and talk. The reason I say this is that Sherman was the one who said, Vishaka, this is a good idea. Where are you going to find curators? Who knows what's good? And I had the audacity to say, Sherman, just because you don't know it doesn't mean they don't exist. So he said, are you going to find them? I said, yes. If I decide to come here, that's what I will do. And out of that emerged my search for finding curators, artists, and it was in this very room that we had the first ever gathering mm -hmm. of about 20 museum curators or artist curators, because in many countries there were no curators, there were just artists who curated shows, and Western or the American museum curators who came. So Kathy Halbright, Rob Store, mm -hmm. Alexander Monroe, who was already working on the Japanese show at the time. And out of that emerged the whole program that we would do. And Apinan Poshananda, who was indeed a recent graduate from Cornell. I had met him in 91 in Thailand. And I invited him to come here. And then out of that, I decided, Apinan, you're going to do this show. And it was all because in Australia, there was a huge amount of work being done at this time. And there, all the big Asian shows were being done by a committee. And the people who were here from Asia said, we hate this idea of shows by committee. Why is it that Western shows are never done by committees? They're done by a single curator. Why can't we have a curatorial voice? So I said, OK, that's what we'll do. Gao Ming Lu was here. He had just come from China because after 89, he had to leave. And at that point, we decided Ming Lu would do the next show. Mm -hmm. And Margot Machida was already on the works for the first contemporary Asian American show was in 94. The context is as much about the field, about this institution, and about what was going on out there. Mm -hmm. So some of you will remember that this was also the time 1990 was a decade show, mm -hmm. which was one of the first major identity show with African-American, mm -hmm. Latino, and Asian-American artists. And that was New Museum, Studio Museum, and Museo del Barrio. And all of these are my very good friends. So it was uh, Marsha Tucker at the New Museum, and Kinshasa at the studio, and, and Susanna at, uh, at the Museo del Barrio. And we began to think about this issue of how do you go about thinking of this moment where Asia was just beginning to be seen as a contemporary mm -hmm. place in terms of politics, economics, liberalization in India, what was happening in China at the time. Mm -hmm. So there was some interest economically. Politically, people were beginning to think about Asia in a slightly different way, not completely. But it was true, and as you recall, the first thing Holland Carter wrote for Traditions Tension, yeah. its quote was, a friend asked me, could there ever be contemporary art in India? How could it be? If there is, it's either too provincial, mm -hmm. or too derivative, yeah. or too much of one or the other. That, and then Holland actually said, this show goes to dispel that notion and what we're doing. And I think part of it was to say that artists were already ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. as they always are. And I guess I would then raise right. the question to Aramayani and to Xu Bing, this idea of what is contemporary, and that, you know, especially, or specifically for this kind of Western audience, contemporary meant something very specific and very, you know, um, I guess for lack of another word, Western. But I, I mean, Aramayani, being in Indonesia, I mean, you know, you were one of the pioneering artists of the contemporary art field in Indonesia. And so, I mean, what, were you working on kind of an independent track? Were you watching what others were doing outside of 
the country? I mean, what, how, how, how do you react to this quote by Holland Cotter that, you know, how can there be contemporary art in Indonesia or India or, you know, what would, what is your response to that? Uh, yeah, at that time, it was really like um, challenging kind of situation mm -hmm. because uh, this term contemporary art also was something really new. And my work is always like being questioned, is it art, either in Indonesia or abroad? So, um, yeah, that's the situation besides the other consequences of the work, like my work, because somehow deal with some issues. And yeah, I had to have some problem out of that. <laughs> yeah, it's really good because you work we in a very it well. political space, right? right. Right, yeah. Mm, but then with this um, exhibition, tra Tradition Tension Exhibition, I took part on this exhibition, although my work also, again, has some problem <laughs> in the exhibition itself. So I don't know why, but okay, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it gives uh, me a kind of uh, support, of course, of my practice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I can continue until now, although always like being in trouble from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> well, then but you wouldn't be a good artist otherwise if you didn't get in I trouble think sometimes. That what's interesting, um, Armani, you might talk about is that the fact is artists have been making work in Indonesia or in India or in China, mm -hmm. always. Yeah. Artists make work. Right. They don't say, gee, am I contemporary, am I not? Mm. You're just making work. And I think people like Armani or F.X. Horzono or Dardan Cristanto, great, great, great artists in Indonesia, they were making work for a long time. Yeah. It's just that there's some tendency in New York that if I don't know it, it doesn't exist. Well, it's very provincial in that way. Yeah. I mean, even though we are in such a cosmopolitan <laughs> space, right? I mean, and I think part of it is this idea of cultural specificity as well, and this idea of tradition and authenticity authenticity. And I'm curious, we could maybe address um, yeah. Xu Bing because yeah. his iconic Good work, point. Book from the Sky, that was included in Inside Out, was previously shown in China. And I have a quote where, um, you know, at the occasion of his first exhibition of Book from the Sky in 1988, um, you know, it was written that Xu Bing's new work should be seen as one of the most important modern works of art in the new wave of fine art since 1985. So I mean, in that context, when it was, I mean, it was such an ambitious work. You know, you spent over three years creating this alternate language, um, you know, of over, you know, 3,000 characters. Um, but I think this idea of cultural spe specificity, you know, comes into play as well, and the idea of translation, and, and we were actually talking about this in, um, a forum earlier today about today, um, you know, that if audiences are not so familiar with the work, then they really can't gain a full um, understanding of what, what the meaning is behind it. But I guess, um, you know, for you, Xu Bing, did you find, um, how did you find the difference of reception of Book from the Sky when you were in China and, and its inclusion in Inside Out? And, Sorry, I use Chinese. Yeah. So I'm going to mm. speak in Mandarin. <laughs> 这个你说实际上，我当时在做天书的时候呢，那个时候是在中国，呃，是在八八六年的前后。嗯。so when I did the work of Book from the Sky uh, in China, that was around 86, 1986。那个时候的中国的大的环境呢，刚刚开放不久，所以呢，我整个的文化界其实都是在。都是在这个向西方的当代文化学习 so of course the historical context at the time is that the China just newly opened uh, within the uh, cultural circle and art circle a lot of people they are really looking outwards and to learn from the western contemporary art 然后呢我当时做天书的时候呢其实我一心想着我要做这个国际的艺术或者当代艺术 这个做完了东西出来以后呢，却是一个彻头彻尾的，从里面的思想的方法到外面的形式和材料，呃，都是东方的。
So at the time, actually, my intention was to create an international artwork and a, a contemporary artwork. Mm -hmm. And a little did I know that after I finished the project, I realized that uh, from its thought process, its conceptions, and its form, form, format, materials, actually, it's through and through very, very Chinese.当时呢就是亚洲协会这个展览因赛的奥特所以把这个天书呢拿到纽约来第一次展览我其实把天书拿到西方来展览的时候我其实有点担心我担心就是说西方人不知道这个中国字到底是不知道这个字是到底是真的
wonderful aspect of both of these exhibitions is that they were um, exhibited in multiple venues across the city and not just here at Asia Society. So you were reaching many different audiences. Mm -hmm. You were partnering with institutions that were not so familiar with the material at hand and maybe not so comfortable with it. And so how did you navigate and negotiate to, to get them on board at well, this period in time? there were several time? strategies. And before I go further, let me also say that you know, as Wun Hui would appreciate, that when you are the director of the museum, you're not the CEO of the whole operation. So it's nice when the president supports your work. So I want to acknowledge that it was really both Bao Aksum and Marshall Bhutan who were very supportive, even though it was not always easy, but you know, that was for sure, uh, because budgets were big and we had to raise a lot of money and, you know, can we do this? But the other piece of, that I must say about the strategy was that right from the beginning, I was very committed to the fact that this should not be about me or what I want to do. How to institutionalize it mm -hmm. within the institution and how to partner with people who then can become ongoing participants in this work. Mm -hmm. Because if you're gonna start a movement, you can't do it by yourself. So it's very, that's why it was important to me that I had the Western curators meet mm -hmm. with the Asian curators. Mm -hmm. It was important to me that Traditions Tensions not only was shown here, but was at the Gray Art Gallery, it was also at the Queens Museum, that and the, and traveled, it traveled, it traveled to mm -hmm. Vancouver, mm -hmm. it traveled to Taiwan, and that's and it's also travel a couple of places anyway, but inside out, right from the beginning, we had a partner, and the mm -hmm. partner was SF MoMA. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was also at that point they were interested in doing something, but they didn't know anything. Sure. So they said, How can we partner with you? And so Gary Gals became part of the curatorial team, mm -hmm. although Gao Ming Lu was the curator, mm -hmm. and there were a team of people who can work with him. And then that show not only went to San Francisco, but also to Seattle, also to Mexico, Mexico mm -hmm. and then ultimately to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. where people were bowled over by your piece, uh, Scream from the Sky, you know, um, uh, Book from the Sky. And it was finally purchased mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be in Hong Kong, one of the versions. So part of it was to say, how do we actually think about something that is not just about you, the institution? but creating something where it becomes part of an ongoing process. And there are other people who are working on this too, so sure. it's just that the scale was different. Sure. And I also knew that if it was a small show here, it would not create the impact. Mm -hmm. So we had to have a big scale, and the only place I could get big scale was PS1. Mm -hmm. So one of the things about, um, you'll remember, about Inside Out, is that, that was Zhang Wan's First Perform entrance, yeah. Yeah. first perform. You remember the performance oh, with, the yeah. with the dog and the <laughs> ice dog and oh my god! Yeah. Uh, Out anyway, in the courtyard, it was freezing, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. And that was on the cover of the Sunday New York Times yes, magazine, yes, you know. Yes, yeah. um, but the point was that, and Zhang Huan literally came, and you now I can say this because it's a long time ago. He came on a visa that we had procured for him as a visitor visa. And he decided he wasn't going to go back. Did you get some flash for that? Mm, um, I said, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> when our curator came, I said, you don't know anything about it? I don't know anything about it? We don't know what's going on? <laughs> and then he sells his work, he gets a green card holder, and he goes back to China. So yeah. there, there you go. But I think what is interesting about those kinds of things is that this institution has been on the forefront of doing things always. Mm -hmm. So whether it's in the performing arts, whether it is in the traditional arts, this was the first museum, first institution to do the first ever exhibition of Chinese ancient bronzes, first major exhibition of Rajput painting, mm -hmm. first major exhibition of Southeast Asian Khmer bronzes. You know, this is something we've always done. But, and some of those shows did travel, so one of the reasons why I felt 
it was important to have travel. Inside Out went to Australia as well. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met Melissa mm -hmm. and then created the position mm -hmm. to bring her here. So, uh, but the point being is that whatever you do, you want to create a strategy that goes hand in hand with where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So I knew this was a 10 year strategy sure. and it needed to kind of be developed and ultimately it would culminate in an endowed position for the contemporary position that um, if it weren't for one of our great, great patrons, Jack and Susie, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have been able to do that. So sure. that was very important. But I think also an important mandate that you set during this early period, it, starting with those two um, convening meetings, one here in New York and one in Mumbai, mm -hmm. um, I think it was in 92 and 94, right, right? right. is to really insist that the the voices come from inside because I think you know even you know Europe was a little ahead of us in the 80s you know 89 there was Magicians de la Terre by Jean Hubert Martin I would or, not use that show as an example but I'm just saying it as an so. as, as in in contrast because right. and you're looking at you know the biennials in 19 right. starting in 1993 right. 95 and 99 but they're all curated by people from the outside. And I think that is a key difference with the exhibitions and the programming here because you invited people who were experts on the inside. And I, I'm curious from the artist perspective, you know, having the curators um, who organized your respective exhibitions, you know, being people that really understood the milieu that you were coming from, understood the issues that you were dealing with in a more in a very intimate way, and that were known entities, did that make you more apt to participate? Or, or, and how did that make you feel in their treatment and installation and discussion of your work in this other, you know, in the Forum of New York, specifically in these other venues? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, maybe I should explain a little bit about uh, the work that uh, uh, on this uh, exhibition. Um, yeah, the work created some controversy. Um, actually, it made, made me become the first Indonesian to receive death threat from the um, hardliners, Islamists. Um, but actually, maybe there's also some kind of misunderstanding there. They didn't really get what I tried to say. So basically, the idea of uh, three works of mine, mm -hmm. uh, Lingayoni, right. A talas is an uh, installation piece, and then offering from A to Z is a performance plus installation. Uh, but basically, um, I want to make it a little um, short here. Um, I have been trying to uh, reinterpret the culture where I come from, which is actually a really mixed kind of culture. Uh, there's an element of animism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam, and of course Western culture as well. And um, this is a struggle actually to try to first understand, but then to give a new interpretation uh, that relevant to the context of today's situation where I live, right? So. This creates this um, controversy because some of these, uh, like the hardliners, for example, they don't like this kind of mix, kind of idea of mm -hmm. culture mix. What is that? You know, it's like derogative kind of <laughs> culture, <laughs> right? So did your inclusion then have a negative impact when you went back to Indonesia? Mm -hmm. It did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and then I had to escape yes. to <laughs> Australia. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, and then after that, I have to move around places. I have been living nomadically actually until today, for more than thirty years. Wow, that's very tough. Yeah. But was it? I mean, I think this question of having Apinan as a curator was that something different and special for you? Yes, that's something um, very special because uh, he's. With this background of he's a very well educated uh, curator and also coming from Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So his background also not so different from mine. So then I can um, explain him what is the idea and what I try to say, right, to express. 
And I was so happy to meet him, actually, because I was like um, on the run, like going here and there. And he was actually looking for me for one year. Wow. <laughs> because he cannot find it. And it's not like now that we have the mobile phone. <laughs> At that time, there was no internet, no mobile phone. So by the help of FX Harsono, finally we met in Jakarta. And then, yeah, then I can explain. And then for the first time, I can find someone who somehow understand what I try to say. Unfortunately, even the curator from my country, he didn't really respond to my idea. I should not say who, but probably better not. Yeah, so that's what happened. And I guess Shu Bing, for you, um, you had already been in the United States. You had come in 1990, so you had been in New York for well, first in Wisconsin and then uh, in New York. But you know. Um, I, I assume that you knew Gao Ming Lu from before, mm -hmm. and did his, you know, your relationship with him and his fundamental understanding of the contemporary scene in China, you know, make you more encouraged to participate, or you know, how how was your reaction to that collaboration? 包括更早的请的阿宾娜这两个人我都比较熟这个做这个这么大型的展览我觉得在当时的西方其实是好像是没有的我觉得这个决定非常重要为什么呢因为实际上在那个时候西方对中国或者对亚洲其实是不是那么
bringing different perspectives. And for a lot of Western uh, curators, they tend to uh, see things very differently. I was in involved with many uh, large-scale exhibitions and curated by Western curators, and I do uh, see that uh, how they see things and how they arrange things and how they uh, conceptualize things are very different from how the Chinese curator will put things together. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I, I do think, mm -hmm. though, that what's important to recognize, and I was very careful about this, yes. is that both Apinan and Gao Minglu had academic training. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, Apinan was a PhD from Cornell, mm -hmm. knew what mm -hmm. the Western field was about. So they were able to translate. Right? Minglu mm -hmm. was doing his PhD at Harvard, mm -hmm. had moved because of the 89 situation, mm -hmm. and was at Ohio State. Sure was actually aware of the Western perception. Mm -hmm. And both of them, we had a group of people, so Gary Garrels, myself, I was very actively involved. Mm -hmm. I was very aware that it is not just that somebody's from inside, but somebody also understands that there <laughs> is the world of New York and what that looks like mm -hmm. and why we need to think about it. So it's not simply that it's somebody is from somewhere, sure. mm -hmm. but it's their training, their field, and right. their yeah. expertise. Yeah. It's very mm -hmm. crucial. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. also I would never want to say that, let's say, just because I'm from India, I'm the only one who should study Indian art. Mm -hmm. no, we need not. the outside no. perspectives as well, but it's the inside and outside perspectives that need to come together, which often doesn't, and in the contemporary art, mm -hmm from Asia, yeah. part of the problem was the prism was too narrow. Mm -hmm. That's what caused people to say, ah, it only looks like something else. Sure. Oh, it's mm -hmm. provincial. Because it couldn't possibly be that this was happening even before it happened in the West, mm -hmm. as we know uh, with the traditions in Japan, you know? Definitely. So part of it was to open that prism. Mm -hmm. And, and not th keep it so narrow. And I think more recently there has been this re-examination of this kind of multiple modernisms. I mean, we were exploring right. that a couple of years exactly. ago with the Ron Modern. Right. That's one of the threads for our Zawuki exhibition that's downstairs right now. So I do think that there has been a great opening up. And I think that, you know, our exhibition program had a lot to do with the foundations of that, for sure. Um, please go ahead. Oh, oh yes. I would like to add a little bit more because uh, uh, what Pisaka just said also is really um, a good thing for mm -hmm. me. That because in my work, um, beside that addressing the, say, uh, culture, the hybrid culture, but also I'm addressing the problem of contemporary problem with uh, globalization, with uh, gender issues, for example. So then um, Apinan can deal with that. Yeah. So it's not just like I, I'm from traditional Asian mm -hmm. and just dealing with traditional culture, right? Of course. Uh -huh. And but, this, mm -hmm. this has been also, of course, for me, a struggle. How can I bring these different cultures, say, East and the West or Asian and Western, mm -hmm. together? Um, it's very challenging. But somehow, often messy. I yeah. mean, it's not very clear cut at all. Right, right. right. I mean, it's, uh, but um, it's, it's also fascinating, <laughs> besides its complexities and all the challenges. But I think that comes through in the way that the two exhibitions specifically were organized, because you know it was stated that uh, traditions tensions wasn't a survey. It wasn't meant to be exhaustive. Right. You know, it wasn't uh, organized. Um, you know, by nation. You know. Right by nationality, but thematically and thinking about these overarching ideas mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of I, um, themes. And so I think that also really speaks to right. the, the, these nuances, too, and to the sensitivity um, and careful examination that you need to, to devote to these works and to these ideas. Harvard. Yeah, graduate from Harvard. Their 
它和策展是有关系的，但是它还有一个东西是跟教育是有关系的。这个教育是，比如说在这个 Inside Out 的开展之前，可能半年时间还是一年时间，就是 g o g g e n h a m 做了一个中国文化是五千年还是五百年的展览。嗯、oh, right. yeah. So I completely agree with Vishaka's、uh, mm-hmm. statement about、uh, Gao Minglu as someone who's、mm-hmm. Harvard educated and he does、uh, possess that kind of wider and more open perspectives. But I do think that、uh, I want to add something to that is that I do think that in terms of the timing of the opening of Inside Out and the reason why this particular exhibition became so influential has something to do with education. More than just the curatorial practices, I think、mm-hmm. it's this element of education.、Mm-hmm. Before the show opened, I believe either around six months or a year be- prior,、uh, at Guggenheim Museum they had the exhibition of、uh, Chinese culture、um, in the past fifty or five hundred years. Five thousand after. after. after.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it was in nineteen ninety-eight. Just nineteen ninety-eight,、mm-hmm. but just、uh, just a little bit、yeah. after we opened the show. It's supposed to be the same time,、mm-hmm. and then it delayed. Yeah, right. They, 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 有点像为这个 Inside Out 做了一个教育和和对这个这个这个地方的文化的一个一个一个了解的一个准备的工作，所以让让观众更好的、很直接的可以进入到 Inside Out 这个展览的这种当代的中国艺术的表现。So I do think that somehow set the tone very nicely. And these two exhibitions somehow complement、uh, mm-hmm. each other so, because,、yeah. on the one hand, you have an exhibition talking about from 5,000 years ago all the way to the end of a cultural revolution right before、mm-hmm. the contemporary Chinese、mm-hmm. art kicks in. So I do think that somehow、uh, they they they、uh, definitely complement each other,、mm-hmm. and、uh, the the audience are educated enough to appreciate what happened before and what's going on right now, and can bridge that、uh, in terms of the temporal. Connections from、mm, the past、hope. to the present.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've been, just been talking about, you know, this moment in the '90s where the prism was quite small. You know, we were really pioneering these ideas and and sh- you know doing something very innovative and fresh. But let's fast forward to now at this very global moment. You know, you see institutions like the Tate, like MoMA.、Um, you know,、uh, Met. Yeah, Met. I mean, so many in you know smaller institutions as well. Um, really focusing on Asia quite prominently, and so I wonder, you know, from the artist's perspective, do you really feel like the plan, you know, that this reflects a greater understanding of、um, what's going on globally and, and in Asia, or how how do you feel about this prolif this proliferation of exhibitions from more kind of encyclopedic or kind of mainstream? Western institutions.、Um, yeah, I think. I mean, after twenty something years, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I notice there are changes、mm-hmm. um, in the West, or also say in Asia. In Asia too. I too. Mean, yeah. So there are more、um, exchanges. And communication, of course. Now we have this very、uh, good media, right? Although it has its own danger, of course.、Um, Facebook and everything,、um, internet.、Um, I think now we are coming closer. So, for example,、uh, my sort of communication with my artist friends、mm-hmm. for from say the Western world.、Um, Is becoming, of course, easier, and then we can really share、um, problems or issues, because in this globalized world, we have almost like similar kind of situation. Although, of course, we have the 
different cultural backgrounds and issues mm -hmm. in regards to that um, uh, area. And we also have to work together. But the fact is what is clear now, we are like coming to one big village. Mm -hmm. And we really have to deal with each other in a positive sense. I mean, there is also, of course, conflict, right, between groups of people. But and, mm -hmm. and how do you think that the contemporary field has evolved within Indonesia and and Southeast Asia? And does it have any correlation to, you know, exhibitions like uh, traditions, tensions, and kind of that um, kind of highlighting of what's been going on in the contemporary sphere, you know, with working, practicing artists today? Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think um, this uh, exhibition has a big influence in the region, Southeast Asia, and also Indonesia, for sure. Um, younger artists, for example, now they can um, refer to this uh, work from their, say, senior, right? <laughs> <laughs> but still practicing. <laughs> and try also to keep up with the development, right? Um, but uh, this is really um, giving a kind of, you know, uh, insight beside, of course, information about what the senior had done. Mm -hmm. So they can develop it further, right? with their kind of uh, ideas and practice. So this is really good. Yeah, good. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that in the world, 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 呃，无法计算的，嗯，比如说当时如果是学习，呃，中国古代艺术的，其实找工作，大大学找工作也是很困难的，那就不要说当时就没有中国当代艺术这个专业，而现在呢，其实很多大学都抢着有中国当代艺术专业的人才去大学当老师，嗯。So I definitely agree with the interpretation of how these exhibitions have huge impact on what we practiced uh, within China or uh, Indonesia or greater Southeast Asia area. And I do think that without a doubt, uh, what's happening right now in the world and in the United States, uh, it's a very different world that we're dealing with. And if you see that when the show Inside Out came about, uh, the interest that people had at the time about Asia or about China, and there's no comparison uh, in terms of the, uh, the amount of interest that we do have towards this part of the world now. And uh, you can see it from, for example, at the time, if you are someone who is an expert within the ancient art practices in China, it will be very difficult for you to even find a job uh, teaching or doing anything that uh, within academia. Uh, let alone to say that if you are actually someone who was doing Chinese contemporary art at the time, mm -hmm. uh, 20 or so years ago. Mm -hmm. But now if you look at how uh, a lot of people came to the United States and they learn and they study about Chinese contemporary art and now they become very, very popular and very competitive in the uh, academia uh, teaching market. Um, so I do think that you see the dramatic transformation mm -hmm. from the past to the now. I, I must say that I had never, ever anticipated that there would come a time within 25-year period that 78% mm -hmm. of incoming PhD students in Asian art in this country only want to do contemporary art. I, know, it's I would right. have <laughs> never thought that nobody would care about the 5,000 years that came before. Mm -hmm. So now... Yeah. I am really worried oh, yeah. about traditional Asian art. I think we need a revolution again because... Adriana. And, and I think the reason why it's important is something what Armani said, which mm -hmm. is that on the one hand, the world is shrinking. We're coming together. We think it's getting homogeneous. Mm -hmm. But the flip side that Du Wei Ming, the great uh, philosophy professor who was at Harvard and now at Beida, has talked about is the flip side of it is the frictions that come from that closeness. 
It's the apparent closeness. And out of that, people think we are the same. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, we're not the same. So it requires more subtlety to understand the cultural specificity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of where people come from. And it requires greater understanding mm -hmm. of what has come before. We now live in the world of historical amnesia. Young people, and I deal with them at Columbia even, where they care, but even Vietnam War seems like another mm -hmm. long time ago. So if you're thinking about 18th century, it's like what? Yeah, it's like another lifetime. It's another lifetime. So the point I'm making is that I think while the world has come closer, many more people get to see contemporary Chinese or Asian art, I do not believe that we have gone far enough mm -hmm. in the scholarly, academic, educational material to actually understand the nuances mm -hmm. that are both about cultural specificity and about part of the global arena. And I think this is true for even artists who live in America mm -hmm. and maybe of different backgrounds. Sure, sure, sure. So part of this is that the job of all of you, the curators, becomes much more complex. Mm -hmm. And you require more subtlety, more agility, and greater understanding of both the past and the present than perhaps it was even available mm -hmm. 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the commercialization of contemporary art has gone far, far ahead. And what's happened is that commodification is farther than the scholarly studies. So the art ecology mm -hmm. is still very uneven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that I would hope when we, all of you at the Asia Society, would continue to think about. Because I don't think that we have created depth yet. Mm -hmm. and, and that's I, what needs to be done. I want to add a little bit to this, Michelle. I want to add a little bit to this, which is why the modern art 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 I want to add something about why, in terms of the Chinese contemporary art or non-Western mm. contemporary art, become so popular mm. in such a short amount of time. Mm. Uh, I think, in some ways, it's not the change in art itself, or the change in art itself. It's not the change in art itself. I don't think that you can uh, attribute it to the art itself. Actually, there's a reason behind it. The main reason is that the art itself is not the change in art itself. 呃，最主要的一个原因，我觉得是，就是说，在这个，比如说这个柏林墙倒了以后，是吧？就是说这冷战结束了以后，这个我们整个世界都在在一个欢欣鼓舞的一个状况，感觉这个世界，呃，要这个在一个自由的一个资本主义的一个价值观的基础上，世界将会变得越来越好。So I do think that uh, if you think about historically, uh, following the collapse of the Berlin Wall, the end of Cold War, I think that uh, as the <coughs> world community gathered, we feel that there's an optimistic uh, yearning and uh, appreciation of this kind of free market capitalism value that we all share. But this is 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 26 years ago. After that, the world seems to be getting better and better. 好像变得更糟，嗯，而且呢，问题越来越多。这个，呃，对，所以呢，这个。And later, people realize that after 26 so years, uh, things are not looking up. That actually, in fact, it's getting worse, and people really feel disillusioned. 嗯，而且呢，这种战争和这种冲突，就是说，好像是这个。单一的这个资本主义的这个价值观和这个原始的地方的价值观或者宗教的价值观之间的冲突越来越厉害。嗯。So of course that came with the wars and conflicts around the world, and I do think that this idea of 
seemingly universal capitalism somehow is、mm-hmm. clashing with this idea of the traditional、mm-hmm. value system, whether or not it's through、uh, religion, <coughs> it's through a certain、uh, nationhood or na- idea、mm-hmm. of nativism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 而中国是一个社会主义国家，但实际上它本质呢又吸收了很多这个资本主义价值观的这个优质的地方。嗯。So if you look at China, this is a socialist country, but at the same time absorbing a lot of value system from the capitalist society. 嗯，所以这个地方的工作方法和这个地方的这种，呃。这个地方为什么发展的这么快？其实对西方是一个疑问。So for the West, it is really something that is beyond their imagination and hard to understand how this system actually worked in China, in terms of as a socialist country, but at the same time almost like capitalism on steroids. Yeah, 实际上对中国当代艺术的关注，呃，我觉得很大程度是。西方在通过对中国当代艺术的表现，或者说新的现象，而，呃，这个实际上，因为当代艺术是一个一个一个地区的现场的最敏感的反应。So I think that the reason why a lot of people are, they really look into this contemporary Chinese or con,、uh, Chinese contemporary art is because these artists and these works actually reflect. The expressions and the phenomena that you're witnessing right now in China, and that it's the easier entry point for them to understand this particular area. Yeah, 实际上这个，呃，实际上是西方其实是想通过对中国当代艺术的关注，而从中获取更多的关于中国的呃现场的信息。So I think the West, a lot of them, they through the understanding or the appreciation of Chinese contemporary art, they will get to understand more of what's actually going on right now, culturally, socially,、uh, in China. 嗯，如果中国在今天没有这么这么的变化，还是像北朝鲜一样，我想美国和世界都不会关注中国当代艺术的，也许也没有当代艺术。嗯。So if China just stayed the same throughout these years, similar to the situation in North Korea, I don't think that anyone will actually pay attention to China <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, but I think what I'm hearing from everybody is that you know, at, we are much closer together in a lot of ways. But I think now the work to be done is to kind of lift the layers of the onion peel and to really kind of get at the crux of the matter. Um, and to understand how, I mean, everything is evolving so much more rapidly,、um, and to keep abreast of that.、Um, I mean, there's so many other topics we could talk about, but I guess the parting question that I have all of you, for for all of you in relation to Asia society, you know, what do you see as the priority going forward for our contemporary program? What do you think is the most important thing to focus on、um, to kind of maintain our Position, I guess, to kind of pioneering,、um, you know, issues in the field. <coughs> what What are your recommendations, or you know, where would you like to see Asia society go in focusing on contemporary Asian art? Right.、Um, I would like to、uh, actually give a response to what Visaka、um, said and also Shubin.、Um, it's about、um, the. Economic system itself and how the commodification is becoming a rule of the game. Well, actually, in my <coughs> Atalasa work, I was actually addressing this issue. So that was like 23 years ago.、Mm-hmm. Um, I was like aware that this is what is going on, and I think it will become worse, and it is, right? And so, for example, in that work itself, I put some items there representing, for example, culture,、uh, religion, that is being commodified, like everything becoming commodity. I think we should be aware also about this, since we are dealing with culture 
and We're also the stewards of the information <coughs> right to keep that in mind right mm. so I think um, institution like Asia society uh, can give a big contribution in sort of like giving a kind of um, how can I say what is the correct word in English um, yeah, addressing this kind of issues because this is very important. Otherwise, um, Asian as well as Western uh, get mixed up, you know, what, what is this culture? Yeah, so this is my struggle in trying to sort of keep my cultural roots, but also understand uh, the context <coughs> of today's and how these cultural roots can be understood within the context of today. Otherwise, it's becoming irrelevant, mm -hmm. mm. old-fashioned, whatever you may call it, yeah? And then you just like dump it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if not, like uh, the commodity, it's become something exotic, mm. or then romantizing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. right. I don't want to do that. Mm. I respect my ancestor very much, so I want to make their philosophy, belief system, and life, even <coughs> today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shubay, any thoughts? Any final thoughts? So I do think that everything in the Asia society has been doing is something that I'm very, very happy with, and also mm -hmm. think that it's, it's, taking the, uh, it's on the right track and taking the right direction. 因为其实亚洲协会我知道它有非常长的历史政治的就是说很多的政策呀政治啊为了一些那个呃比艺术和文化更重要的人了解亚洲而建立的 so I think that the reason why uh, it's actually uh, doing so well because of its institutional history in the past that uh, if you know the history of Asia society came out of uh, this idea that why is that uh, the United, United States was involved in many wars, including Vietnam Wars, the Korean Wars, that then actually didn't really uh, do well in those wars. Uh, <coughs> at the root of the, the, the problem is that uh, the United States as a country didn't understand Asian countries well enough to actually be competitive. So I do think uh, coming out of that particular tradition and uh, focusing very much on the political <coughs> aspect of this and military aspect of this, uh, I think that uh, really uh, explain a lot why that is something that the Asia Society used to focus a lot on, and now it's branching out to the the social and cultural and the art spheres. So I do think that uh, what Asia Society can do going forward is very similar to how it was established in the first place is this idea of understanding mm -hmm. the other parts mm -hmm. Of uh, the world, in, uh, in this case Asia, mm -hmm. uh, because I think the understanding is not just on the surface, but something that we can slowly mm -hmm. go in depth. So, you say, Yao Zhou Xie Hui, very important. Yao, in one, 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 so this is uh, something that you can just follow the, the trajectory that already been somehow projected, and I think that uh, is something I, I I think it's going to turn out very well. At the end. And Vishaka, any you know parting? What? How can you don't want to go to Christmas past the legacy <laughs> sit here <laughs> and tell the current leadership what they should do? I, I think, think yeah. Bunvi and I've talked a lot. And we will continue to talk, but the reality is that I do think that 
for this institution that is a multidisciplinary institution, mm -hmm. something that Xu Bing said that's really worth thinking about, which is that if arts become center of understanding political and cultural contemporary realities, not as an afterthought, not as a thing by itself, mm -hmm. but at the center of right. it. That would be an interesting possibility for this mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I do think that since this current reality is really no longer about purity of anything, mm -hmm. contrary to what some people might like to say, that it's worth thinking about Asian things, Asian-ness, in multiple locations and multiple spheres. Mm -hmm. So I remember when we first started doing contemporary art, and I, we actually started doing viewpoints with contemporary artists. Mm -hmm. So I had Pat Steyer, we had Francesco Clemente, and Francesco said to me, why wouldn't you do a show of my work at the Asian mm -hmm. Society? Mm -hmm. This is 1993. And I said, Francesco, it's too early. Mm -hmm. I can't do a big Western artist like you when we haven't really done anything mm -hmm. with contemporary Asian artists. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. However, now is a different time. So you might want to mix things up mm -hmm. both ways mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see what happens. But you're in good hands, and <laughs> you'll do just fine. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> well, thank you to everybody. We have a couple of minutes maybe for two questions, if anybody has questions for the panelists. Uh, the woman right in the back. Okay, thank you um, so much to the panelists for a really thought-provoking talk. Um, I was wondering, um, uh, the critic uh, Xiaobing Tang has this interesting idea of the dissident paradigm, so um, art that comes from China or Indonesia or other um, uh, states with non-democratic regimes is often evaluated um, solely based on whether or not the artist is seen as a dissident, um, kind of flattening out <coughs> Um, alternative ways of reading the art. Um, and to that, I would add um, maybe a, a spiritual paradigm, so kind of this narrative of the mm -hmm. artist as um, a meditator or their practice is meditative. Um, and I think that a lot of the criticism of contemporary Asian art falls in either one of these two categories, um, either this dissident paradigm or this kind of spiritual paradigm. Um, so I was wondering how you as artists um, think about kind of breaking out of these two uh, stories that get told about Asian art in the West and also how as curators, um, you might go about um, creating new stories to tell about this art. Do either of you want to? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's very polite. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I understand, and in a way, I also see that problem. You know, if we are being categorized as either dissident artists or spiritual artists, that's like a bit simplistic, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this is the challenge for us as artists, how to bring things together. Well, maybe I use a little, I borrow um, this term, um, like integrated kind of system uh, where we supposed to, you know, bring things together so then we can deal with this kind of uh, categorization. Yeah. I don't want to be categorized like spiritual artist, although I'm wearing this. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> For example. I mean, I think from a curatorial perspective, you know, I, I'm going to follow up on one of Vishaka's last points. I mean, it's really looking at the nuances and not kind of glomming onto these larger kind of idealistic perspectives. I mean, really kind of looking at the artists as individual practitioners and thinking about the ideas. I mean, you have to think about the time in the context of what they're making as well. So you have to, I think, continually be nimble and have an open mind and really not have any preconceived notions because I think when you do that you become very pleasantly surprised and it you gain such a deeper understanding and appreciation for the work that you're um, you know that you're dealing with so 
I mean, I must say that I think one of the things that's interesting about both of the shows that we've been talking about is that neither one of them fell into that trap. And it's because we worked on it. And it has to do with also this insider-outsider position of the curator, but also really keeping an eye out that you're not just going to other mm -hmm. and put people into boxes, which really is to sustain and re-emphasize the preconceived prejudices or uh, preconceived notions of the places. Do you have a comment, Shubing, or? For us, this is an old question and an old issues that we have been dealing with for a long time. Because, for example, in the United States, it's often asked, is your work free in China? Or, 感觉你是来自于一个非常的那个不自由的一个非常政治的一个国家，但是你怎么搞那么当代的艺术？ So the questions I got a lot when I was here in the United States, people tend to ask me that, uh, well, will you be able to practice this type of uh, contemporary art in China, assuming that, of course, the, the underlying assumption is that since you are from such an oppressive, uh, without any uh, freedom of expression uh, in the society. So I do think that this is something that I've been dealing with for many, many years. Mm. Because, uh, 我想呢，这个，我我我我是觉得就是说这个，嗯，我是觉得这个中国确实是一个非常政治的国家，那是毫无疑问的。所以在我们的艺术中呢，即使你不直接的讨论艺政治，但是在我们的作品里面呢，它